This video is part of a series that we requested for this year's Robot Pride Day celebration. We asked everybody to post a video response on the Robot Pride Day channel at YouTube. I want to clear up some things about what Robot Pride Day is and what it isn't. It's not a Y2K thing, we're not here to sell t-shirts. It's something that evolved in the early 90s from the Sky Pirates, which was a group of people that at that time we young teenagers identified as like-minded people. People that would attend Blue Dog Pick shows, which was a band that I was in back then in Toronto. And we realized quickly that the band and all of its antics was not nearly as big as the group of people that would come uh, with increasing enthusiasm and bring their own costumes and themes and set dressing. So we would go into a place and utterly transform the environment into a new thing. But the real question is why? Why does it matter if you have a bunch of people with nose piercings and lip piercings and tattoos and crazy colored hair? What really is that doing? Is it just anti-authoritarian? Is it teen rebellion? Is it really that different if everybody's done it before you in one way or another? What we inadvertently stumbled upon back then was the power of a network. In the past hundred years we've gone and spent trillions of dollars basically breaking down the universe into smaller and smaller parts, trying to understand the components. And now that we have all of the pieces, essentially, I mean, there will be more, but we have most of them, the problem is figuring out how the hell does it all go back together. What will solve this is the networks. The study of networks is going to provide, over time, an understanding of the recipes that are needed. If I took a cake, and I said, through science, I can deduct that there are eggs, that there's flour, that there's milk, sugar, food coloring, and so on in this cake, and I have these articles spread across the counter, you're not going to know how to do it if you've never baked before. You'd need a recipe to show you exactly how much of each to use, and when and how long to bake it, and so on. Sky Pirates are a network, and why do we celebrate Robot Pride Day every year on August 4th? Robot Pride Day is about paradoxes, it's about irony, it's not celebrating the ever-increasing number of robots or our interest in them. We like robots because they are a way for us to look at ourselves from the outside in a way that's manageable for us. We can study monkeys, but monkeys have their own needs and their own characteristics and their own properties. We find ourselves in the same loop, trying to reverse engineer them, trying to compare them to us, when essentially, they're monkeys, they're not humans. It's very difficult to see what you are from inside the box. Robots give us a way of learning about how the parts work together. How does a knee joint work? How does a leg joint work? Inverse kinetics, neural networks, how does the brain function? How does learning work? We can play the role of creator and find a version of ourselves that as we apply knowledge and experimentation start to see results or see ourselves getting further away from those things. Can you imagine if all of us were identical and perfect? We would have no reason to aspire to anything. We'd have no motivation to try anything out. We would be like the people in that Radiohead video where they just lie down on the sidewalk. If you had a million robots, you know, numbered A1, A2, A3, and so on, up to a million, eventually some sort of a glitch or some sort of an anomaly would take place and that robot would behave differently than the rest. At what point does it say, I have my own identity and it needs to be recognized as such? There is a certain value to this anomaly that may show you another way, another path, a better way to do it. Whereas homogeneity means all things are alike, heterogeneity is its dialectical opposite. Why is this important? Well, in a world that is increasingly globalized, in fact, we could say it has been globalized, there is a problem when I can go into a Costco or a Walmart that opens up in the northern forests of Canada or in Cambodia, and it will look essentially the same. What it does is it obliterates any possibility of inundation in the culture itself and the things that worked in that geography among those people over time. Macrobiotics says you should eat local, you should eat of the place that you're in. There's a reason why you eat curries in India in hot climates and bacon in the winters of the north. These things demonstrate things that have worked over time. As we lose languages, we start to also lose the nuance and the subtlety of interpretation of the things that are around us. Why would a robot, which is just like every other copy of itself, 
ever find a reason to be proud. As I pointed out, the pride comes from the fact that it is different than all the other ones around it. It's proud of the fact that it represents a unique experiment, a unique set of possibilities. Even the slightest divergence from the mean means that there is a potential for a better way, a different solution, or even an uglier solution, which may eventually lead to something more efficient, more enlightening, what have you. So the phrase Robot Pride Day is both ironic because it's saying we shouldn't necessarily be proud of the idea of homogeneity, of everything being the same, and yet it's also allegorical. And it's a question. It says, why would a robot be proud? And in so doing, we can look back on ourselves and say, why should we be proud of what each of us is, of what each anomaly is? I want to share with you the story that for me was really the seed for Robot Pride Day. It's a story by Isaac Asimov, the man who invented the word robotics. He was both a scientist and a science fiction writer of the highest order, and he wrote a short story called Light Verse, and it goes like this. I'm paraphrasing, and I'm going to give you the very shortest version I can. A woman was indicted for first-degree murder. She was a collector of knives that came from around the world, and she had these laid out around her house. She was also a renowned artist who created floating sculptures of light in her house that no one could figure out the physics. No one could recreate these incredible and intuitive and awe-inspiring artifices. She had to help her this antiquated robot butler. It was a crotchety old thing. It was falling apart. And her good friend from the Robotics Institute always insisted that she should really upgrade to one of the newer models because it would take off some of the burden. One day she's having an exhibition of her latest works and this gentleman, again, he brings up the subject of her old robot butler. She says, no, no, you know, you have to understand that I really do like to work the way that I do. I'm used to the things, that, the way that they are and, and I'll be able to manage as we do. The heads of state and, and the, the most uh, acclaimed artists in the nation come to see her work and they're all astounded and they're marveling at these things. And on the way out, the gentleman from the Robotics Institute says, I wanted to tell you, I, I understand your feelings about your robot butler, and I figured I would, I would thank you for what you've been doing. With a little gesture, I, I took a moment and I adjusted your robot, and I think you should be working more efficiently now. And the woman looks at him in horror and reaches over for one of the knives that's sitting there in the foyer. And she says, but don't you realize that it was the deficiency it was the anomaly, the flaw in the robot that has been creating these works of light. And now, now that you've repaired it, those works of art will never be available to us again. And with that, she plunged the knife into his stomach, killing him there in the front steps of her house. Robot Pride Day is a celebration of life, of all the different cultures, all of the different possibilities. It says, no matter how hard you try, to commodify, homogenize, make all things equal, eventually you will recognize that it is the differences between us that make us all divine, that make us all beautiful, that nature in itself is such an incredibly complex algorithm. It's something that's so difficult for us to put back together that the hubris that we have in thinking that we'll somehow solve that problem is the same hubris that assumes that we should. If we fail to appreciate the complexity of these things, we may very well be sealing our doom. Just like we try to assume that we can enrich non-foods, uh, corn byproducts, with vitamins and nutrients that we've identified just by inserting them back in. Your cereal is now iron enriched. We're pretending like the hundreds and hundreds of other components in those foods are no longer relevant, that somehow the interaction between those things is not the actual source of our well-being and our health, and more importantly, our enjoyment of this journey through this incarnation. To see some of the past discussions and events that have happened, go visit robotpriday.com and feel free to post a video response here. Thanks a lot for listening. Happy Robot Pride Day 2009, and be well.